Hi, my name is Victoria Warfel, and I'm with Dream Dogs Canine Wellness and Behavior, located in Central Florida, and I'm going to talk with you today about holistic dog training and why this is a must for every trainer. I am not a doctor or a veterinarian or a medical professional, but I am a dog trainer and a dog owner who has worked with thousands of dogs. I've seen what works and what doesn't work, how to support your training to be more effective, and a lot more. Why holistic training? Holistic training saves time, gets you better results, a deeper connection with the dogs, happy dogs, and even happier clients. We use Reiki and energy, which are the universal language, essential oils for physical and for behavioral support, kinesiology tape for joint and muscle support, and doga for that spiritual connection. Who can benefit from incorporating holistic training into their life? Dog trainers, dog professionals, dog owners, and pretty much everyone. This has changed everything for us and I cannot wait to share this with you today. We're going to start with talking about Reiki and energy. I am an Usui Reiki master and a certified animal Reiki practitioner. Now we have been using Reiki and energy for years. We just didn't know about it or about what it was called. But uh, energy is all around us. I liken it to the force in Star Wars. Because you guys knew there was a Star Wars reference coming somewhere in this presentation. Um, it is the universal language. The dogs feel the energy that you project. And you can use energy to communicate. So how many of us have had a room full of quiet dogs. And that one dog comes into the room and disrupts everything with his wonky energy. Um, how many times have your dog maybe gone over to correct a dog because they weren't balanced, right? They weren't all there um, or they were too there maybe. But, uh, but the dogs feel that. People feel that. If you come in and you're sad and depressed and hunched over and mopey, people are going to feel that. Um, and, and understand that there's something going on here. If you come in and you're beaming and you're so excited that you're basically dancing on cloud number nine, they're going to also feel that. Well, the same way as your dog feels that. Remember, the your dog feels everything that goes up the leash and down the leash, right? The energy communicates both ways. So if you're holding onto your dog's leash and you see somebody and you tighten up, your dog's going to be like, oh, there's somebody there that, that we need to watch out for. So that energy, that Reiki, that communication happens all the time. How do you use it? First, you need to manage your energy. That's the biggest thing to start with. You need to center yourself and find your calm and then work with your dog. And how do we do this? We start with either meditation or doga to get people in that right state of mind. Um, I had a client come in, I remember, she's sitting across from me, and she says, I don't know why my dog's crazy, my dog's just so crazy, he's just so crazy, and she's fidgeting constantly, she's saying, and I just don't know why, and he's just so, so just like crazy, just all the time, he's just so wild, wild and so crazy, and I looked at her, and I'm like, I know why your dog's so crazy, because you need to control your energy better. And as we worked with her, part of her training was on centering herself, finding her calm, and then working with her dog. And as the energy was better between the two of them, as the communication was better between the two of them, her dog started to calm down and be her partner instead of, you know, just a crazy wonky dog who wanted to do crazy wonky stuff. Uh, one of the examples that we'll give to clients is you want to be Superman or Wonder Woman, right? You want to have your hands on your hips sometimes with your head up raised and your shoulders back and that ultimate confident pose like Superman does. Like that's what you want. Um, I used to tell people, think of that big S on Superman's chest and you want to just beam calm energy at your dog. And I'd also tell them, bear with me because this sounds a little bit weird, but... And it worked because as they calmed down, as they focused on them and their dog, they were able to use that, that energy to communicate a lot more 
And more is said without words than is said with words, especially when dealing with our dogs. You know, how many of us start training without adding the words to it? You know, if you're teaching, for example, sit or follow me on a leash or come when called, you know, do you start with sit, 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 sit? Or do you start with getting that behavior and then adding that vocal? But, you know, that's the same thing here with the energy, with the Reiki. Um, we do use this with every single dog that we work with. And your sphere of energy is going to influence dogs outside of, you know, who you're working with directly as well. So I'm sure every single one of you has used Reiki, has used energy to communicate, even if you didn't know what it was that you were doing. Um, what do you want to do? You want to look like somebody who should be followed. Uh, one of the things that Rich always says is your nose, your belly button, and your toes, especially when you're walking a dog, all want to point forward. Uh, we had a client with uh, his dog, and this was a veterinarian when we were up in Gainesville, and we we're working with him walking the dog up and down the driveway on leash. And the dog was doing well. You know, he was following, and the client wanted his dog to be off leash, but the front yard was not fully fenced. So as he, we're walking, and he's walking the dog up and down, he says, what would happen if I take the leash off? I said, take it off and find out. And he went from nose, belly button, and toes pointing forward to turn, his hips were turned towards the dog, his belly button's halfway turned towards the dog, his nose is facing the dog, and he went from standing up like a straight line to being crooked like maybe a letter S or a letter Q, you know, some weird, smaller case Q. But it was just, it was weird. And his dog, what did his dog do? I'm sure you can guess his dog started wandering off. And the owner started to, he's wandering off. And I'm like, that's because you just twisted up your body. Let's walk forward, walk with me. You know, I was standing right there beside him. So I, I walked forward with him. And as the dog noticed that first, his owner wasn't following after him. And second, that his owner was much more confident and now he looked like someone who could be followed. Guess what happened? His dog started following him, which is what you want to have happen. Um, you can also move animals with energy. So we do this at the ranch all the time. We have the cows, we have goats, and we have chickens. And I have two border collies, and they'll go out and they'll herd them, but sometimes they don't, or they're going after the wrong ones than the ones I want to move. So we can use the energy to get them moved. And I'll, you know, basically put out my arm and extend it out. And it sounds really weird, but you guys have to bear with me here. And I can get the chickens into their coop at night that way without having to follow and chase. I think we have 17 or 18 chickens right now without having to follow each one and, you know, pick them up and toss them in the coop, which I don't want to do. I want them to go in on their own at night. Um, same thing with the cows. Our cows are, they're Jersey cows, so they're on the smaller side. But they're still probably six to 800 pounds or more. And, you know, you can't always force them to do what you want at that size. So we can use the, the energy to get them moving to turn them, to get them where we want them to go, to get them to back off when they start getting a little bit pushy uh, because some of them do have horns. Uh, so, you know, we can use the energy that way. And it's really neat. It's, uh, you know, it looks magic sometimes, but, but it's a really neat thing that you can work on when you're understanding of what it is that you're doing. And even if you're not, start playing with it because you're going to find, you know, you're going to be able to get a lot more done when you focus on yourself and focus on the energy instead of always focusing, for example, on your leash or on your commands. The next I want to move on to is kinesiology tape um, or K-tape. And the kinesiology tape, what is that you're asking? If you've seen the professional athletes or the Olympians or just somebody walking down the street and they have a colorful piece of tape on their body and you don't know what that's for, that's most likely the kinesiology tape. I, I am a certified canine kinesiology tape practitioner from holisticanimalstudies.com. And if you're interested in this, I highly recommend checking out the course. Um, it's very interesting. Um, you're going to learn a lot. And uh, there's case studies you have to do and follow up you have to do with it. So you really get a working knowledge of it with this course. And uh, it's the only one that I've seen 
specifically for the dogs, which is is beneficial. You know, uh, we use this with a lot of them. Now, the, the Reiki and the energy we use with every dog who comes in, every dog that we work with. The kinesiology tape I do not use with every dog who comes in. Um, I tell you, the dogs who need it, though, they're really glad that we do it. And it's usually like our dogs, friends' dogs, client dogs. Um, say I'm working with a client and they have a younger dog and they have an older dog at home who has issues, uh, which we'll talk about in a second what, what the kinesiology tape is good for. But I will, you know, show them how to tape up their older dog at home or have them bring them in and I'll show them how to tape them up and see how that helps them. So what does kinesiology tape do? It provides joint and muscle support. That support and stability come without restricting range of motion, which is huge. And it reduces pain by stimulating mechanoreceptors and blocking nociceptors, which are the pain receptors. A kinesiology tape also increases blood and lymph flow. You can use it to reduce swelling or bruising. Uh, for puppies especially, this next one's good. It improves proprioception and the ability to sense how your body parts are positioned and neuromuscular re-education. Where, though, do I use kinesio tape? Is muscle strains, tears, and stiffness. Uh, you can use it post-acupuncture or body work. Tendinitis. Uh, rehabilitation, management, and or prevention of movement dysfunctions uh, for pain to reduce swelling. Hip dysplasia, that's a big one for me. Um, Pano growing pains, we've done that as well. Um, and limps, just limps that, you know, you want to, you need to tape up before they go to the, the doctor. Here are some pictures of some dogs that we have taped up. Um, I see a lot with the hip dysplasia hip issues. So I have a few pictures here showing some different tapings that we've done for um, hip and for lower back. Uh, the top is a, of course, a German Shepherd. And we taped him up just to, to play around a little bit, see how he does. Uh, the bottom is a Jack Russell, Jack Russell mix. And he was so bad he could barely move. And so we taped him up and he did so much better with that, that he like he took off running and having fun because he was able to move again without the pain. Uh, this top picture here, this is Riddick. He is a three-legged dog, so one of his back legs is missing. And he had been a, a really sweet dog, good temperament, and he started getting snarky. Now, when they came in um, and he was getting snarky, what we could have done, this is actually one of my trainer's dogs, um, what we could have done is say, well, let's correct this behavior. Let's look at the root of it. Why is he getting snarky? Well, why is he getting snarky was because he was in wait for getting his total hip replacement done. And it wasn't time for it, at the, you know, right then. So we needed something else to do. So we tried the kinesio tape to give his hips some support and to help with the pain. And it worked. So we were able to get him up to his hip replacement with the kinesio tape, whereas we would have had to, you know, not let him see other people, not let him see other dogs, you know, and he still had to go out and potty. I mean, he lived with other dogs. So that really wasn't a viable option. But the kinesio tape got to help out with that, which made me very happy. Uh, the bottom picture here is my German Shepherd. Uh, she passed away this year at 10 years old. So I think this was last summer um, because that's when we had shaved her because I needed to see how bad her hips were because they were getting worse. And uh, she spent a lot of this last year or so taped up. Um, you do not have to shave a dog to tape them. I just shaved her because it was summer in Florida and I wanted to see how bad her hips were. And I wanted to shave her. She loved it. She thought it was great because she was much cooler, much happier. And she was 10 years old, oh, what, nine years old last year. She was an indoor dog, um, unless it was potty time. So she, um, she had a bunch of different hip tapings that we had done. And this is just one I had taken a picture of. Uh, I like the Rock Tape brand. And all the pictures that you've seen so far is with Rock Tape brand. That seems to stick the best to the dogs. And uh, it comes in four inch and it comes in two inch. So you can see the top over her, her hips, that's the four inch and I cut it in half. So the bottoms were the two inch. And on uh, Riddick there, that's two inch tape as well. 
Uh, this is Rue. This is my Border Collie, so you can see you can use this with dogs who have fur. It's fine. Um, you don't have to shave them down. What the fur does, uh, the tape on the fur lifts the, the fur, lifts the skin from the muscle, which helps it out that way. Um, so don't start just shaving down dogs to do this. I did not shave Jedi to taper. I shaved her for another reason. And then, you know, we just taped her up anyway. Um, but the top picture here, this is for his shoulder. And the bottom, that is for his wrist. Or you can use something like this for Pano. And uh, we used it. There's a German Shepherd Grimm. And we had taped him up for Pano uh, because he was limping. And, uh, and it, that helped him out quite a bit as well. The problem with taping the front of them like this, their shoulder or their leg or their wrist, is they're going to pull it off a lot easier. So you do want to watch whenever you do tape up your dogs, especially if you have dogs who like to eat everything. Um, you need to make sure that they don't eat this. Um, usually we'll find them around the house. Uh, we've done it on horses as well. I don't think I've done it on my cows yet. Um, they've been fine. So uh, so we taped up a horse and we went uh, back and the horse had pulled it off. So it's neat. You can tape up the animals. Uh, you just have to have to watch for them. And I find that the back, the hip tapings seem to stay on the longest because it's harder for the animal to reach, especially if they're in hip pain already. They're not going to want to turn around and get to it. Um, so it works out well. Uh, here's Adobe. This is another one of my trainers. Um, two different dogs. So the top one we did a knee taping. In the bottom one we did a neck taping. So those are just some of the pictures showing uh, some of the tapings that we've done. Now we do prefer that Rock Tape brand I was telling you about that comes in the 2 inch and the 4 inch width. Um, they have two different lines that I like. One of them is the Equine and the other one is the H2O. You're also going to need non-stick scissors and depending on the dogs that you use, it's not going to hurt to have a, a spray can of the QDA, which is a quick drying tape adherent. And you're going to see a picture of that in the next, I'm going to show you a little video. So here's Zoe. I'm going to go through real quick and show you uh, the smaller rock tape, the two inch, the four inch rock tape, just so you can see the visual, the difference. But because Zoe is a black dog, I am using a pink um, kinesio tape on it just so you can see it better. And here we go. So there's the 4 inch and the 2 inch. These are both um, the equine line. And then here is just pink. That's a different brand. It doesn't stick as well. Those are my non-stick scissors and the QDA. So you'd spray on the QDA if you needed to, especially with the longer coated dogs. She's not super long coat. I would spray her before I do her, but I wasn't doing her to do her. I was doing her to show you. So I didn't do that. So you measure and you cut. And then what you want to do is round the corners. Now a lot of the tape, so you can see the tape's the pink. The bottom is the paper. So the tape will stretch. The paper will not stretch. So you tear off the paper two inches on the front, two inches on the back, and those are your anchors. So you want to put your anchor down without stretching it at all. You just want to put it down and you rub it to activate it, to activate the, the stickiness more and make sure it's on there good. Uh, then you want to pull off that middle piece and apply some stretch and put it on. Now she wants to sit on me because she's Zoe and she likes to sit. But we put it on with that stretch on it and then that second anchor goes on with no stretch and I'm going to rub that a little bit more here but that's how you apply the kinesiology tape to your dog and like I said we don't do it with every dog but the dogs who need it are really glad that we can do it <laughs> uh, next I want to talk to you about doga what is doga it is dog yoga I have yoga certification and doga instruction. So we have done this um, two big times in the past where we've offered it as a group drop-in class at the training center. And the first time was uh, we had a certified yoga instructor come out and she did the people part and I did the dog part. And then uh, whenever we redid it again a couple years ago, I did both the people and the dog part. Uh, why? Why do doga? A better spiritual connection with your dog. It includes your dog in your yoga workout. 
It combines meditation, gentle massage, and stretching for your dog. It's going to calm your dog mentally and physically and strengthen the bond between dog and owner. So this was a fun one. Plus, uh, Gainesville is a lot of college students. There's a lot of yoga studios. So this was our way of incorporating dogs into something that people enjoyed doing. Uh, I'm going to show you some pictures first. Uh, here's Arrow and I. Uh, you can see here it's that gentle massage. It's stretching. Uh, there's always support there. How we would start it is the dogs got worked first. Um, everyone will first comes in and grabs the mat. We had a bunch of mats there or people would bring their own mats in and spread them out wherever they want to in the training center. We would have the essential oil diffuser going. We would have music playing and we would start with the dogs. Uh, once they were good, then it was our turn. Or we'd do like a pose for them and a pose for us, depending. Most of the dogs were leashed, especially the first couple of times that they came, and then we didn't need to leash them up anymore. Like, they knew to stay by the yoga mat. And if you guys do yoga at home, you probably have your dog who wants to join into your yoga routine anyway, so this gives them a great opportunity to do that. Uh, the bottom picture here, that's Rich and Rue, the Border Collie from before. And the top, I don't remember what his name is, um, but you can see we can incorporate them and do some poses with them. And then here's my son, Luke. They get to hang out while we do some of the, the poses too, because I'm not doing that with the dog. So here's Rue lying down beside uh, Luke in the top picture. In the bottom picture, Aero wants to be a goober so he's going to roll on his back and stretch out a little bit which is fine that works uh here's that's riddick that's a three-legged dog in the top picture so they can be incorporated into the poses as well uh here she's doing uh the the baby pose no not the baby pose the the, the child pose child pose on over top of him and then the bottom that's boat pose with with her dog involved with it which is going to give some added um, added weight for some of the poses and then uh, oh this top picture here this is stark and stark uh, he was aggressive and a snark whenever he first started working with us so it was really nice that she was able to come to Doga and incorporate him. So he got to be around the calmer, better energy that we have in the Doga class and be around the other dogs and just work on, you know, just being calm and being well behaved. So she was really glad that she was able to bring him and that he was able to participate in Doga. And then the bottom picture, you know, another one just hanging out while, you know, while dad did Doga there. So this was really something for everybody. And we started Doga because I, I had read about it and I thought it sounded like a really neat thing. So this was, uh, I want to say probably eight to 10 years ago. And I looked into it a little bit more. Uh, there's a woman in Jacksonville who she, this is what she does is she does the Doga. So I talked with her and she has, information out there. I believe her website is dogadog.com, um, but I can get you that information if you guys are interested in incorporating Doga. It's something you would need to watch out for the safety of your dog, um, especially if you're doing this in a group setting, and how you can incorporate the dog safely into your poses, your positions, and your routine. Uh, the next one is the big one, uh, and this is essential oils. So I am Certified Canine Essential Oils Practitioner, Levels 1 and 2. I also have Aromatherapy Certification, and I did get to attend the 2017 Essential Oils and Animal Conference this past April up in Utah, which was amazing. Essential oils can cross cellular membrane. It works on a cellular level to support your dog's training and rehabilitation, and no matter what training methods you use, essential oils can benefit your dog. They are 50 to 70 times more concentrated than herbs. How long does it take to work? In 22 seconds, the molecules reach the brain. 
In two minutes, the molecules are in the bloodstream, and in 20 minutes, they affect every cell in the body. Our history with essential oils. So we've used essential oils. I'm trying to think back to when we first started, and I can't. I don't remember when we first started. I know it's been over five years that we've been using them. And like most people, when I first started using them, I went to the local health food store and picked up, I'm sure it was lavender, and that's primarily what we had used for a while. Um, but then we started using them for the dogs, you know, but we were getting hit or miss results. Uh, we used them on us. We used them for cleaning the house. Uh, what we found is for some dogs, the essential oils were exactly what the dog needed. And for other dogs, we did not see a big change at all. So we basically how what happened is we did a... Uh, unscientific study and we ordered like five different brands of essential oils and we did them with the dogs that were in and we did this last summer and what we found um, was their preference so if you're interested in which ones the dogs do better with come and see me um, contact me because I am happy to discuss it with you and get you guys using amazing oils what we do is we start every dog with essential oils. Uh, for the safety of our dogs, client dogs, and our family, we clean our house with the essential oils and with the essential oil products instead of with the toxic cleaners. And here's a side note, we've had uh, cleaning women come out to the house and I kept getting headaches the day that they would come out for about a day and a half afterwards, I would have massive headaches and nothing was working. But what it did is it turned out to be the many chemical cleaners that they were using on the house and that we were buying because once we switched over, my headaches had disappeared. So that was the only constant. And then uh, when we moved from Gainesville out to the ranch that we have now, we just put any cleaning product that we found in a big box. And we had movers pack us up, so we had all the chemical stuff from Gainesville. The owners at the ranch had left stuff, so we had all the chemical stuff here. So we ended up with this big box. And as I was trying to sort it out to pull out any plastic that we could recycle, uh, you know, from spray bottles that they had left here that we didn't know what was in it, we had added that to it. Um, I was hit by a massive headache, and um, my allergies acted up within just a couple minutes. So, again, that showed me that... Uh, it was it was those toxic chemical cleaners. And if I'm getting it with my sense of smell, I'm wondering how bad the dogs react to it. So some of these dogs who come in with severe allergy issues or severe behavioral issues, because I don't know about you, but I can be a little bit cranky whenever I have a headache. Um, you wonder how much of that might be traced back to cleaners that are used in the home, air fresheners, um, the plug-ins, the sprays, the scented candles that are going, the cleaning products, you know, how, how much of that could be traced back to, to those. So I'm going to show you some of the dogs that we've used the essential oils on. Um, here's Spartacus. Spartacus is an adult Labrador who came in for board and train. He was absolutely crazy, uh, lunching and barking on the leash. Uh, we did training and tug and condition relaxation, and they all helped, but... Before he came to us, his veterinarian wanted to medicate him. And while he's with us, we're like, you know, he might need the medication. Um, but we started using the essential oils, and that was exactly what he needed. And he did fantastic after that. So that was that one key piece that we had been missing was the essential oils. Here's Roxy. Roxy's a hound mix. Uh, she was rescued from the, the shelter a couple weeks before she came out to us. And what had happened was she would curl up in a ball and hide. And it was in the office. It was like maybe a less than a two foot by two foot area. And she would just circle up, curl up and hide. She wanted nothing to do with the world. And it just, it broke her owner's heart and it broke our heart because I didn't want that for her. So we used essential oils to support our training. And with that, we were able to gain her confidence. And you can see here, she's a very happy, friendly girl. Uh, once we... We got to open her up that way. Uh, the day after she returned home, her owners had a human birthday party to go to, so they brought her along. Now, this is the dog who had curled up in a ball because she didn't want to be a part of anything, and she was the belle of the ball. She got to say hi to everybody, and she wanted pets from everybody, and she has been a huge transformation. And again, it's because of the essential oils. 
Here's Hart. Hart, uh, she came in for boarding train, and she comes back for boarding. So Hart comes back every month or so, and she gets free run at my house, as you can see from some of these pictures. We take naps together. Um, she gets to, you know, she gets to sleep on the couch if she wants to. Uh, we love Hart. But she's on allergy pills at home, and she had allergies. So with us, she doesn't need the allergy pills. Uh, when she comes in, she gets a raindrop. Uh, because of what we use for cleaning, we don't have the allergy issues that her mom uh, has at home. So her mom switched up her cleaning supplies as well. Katerina, an adult German Shepherd, she was on at least three different pharmaceuticals when she first came to us. Um, with the veterinarian guidance, we got her weaned off of all of them. And we made huge progress with her for after her training and with using the essential oils with her. Here's Boy Jedi, because remember the shaved German Shepherd from the kinesiology tape videos? That's my German Shepherd, and her name's also Jedi. So we have, you know, Girl Jedi and Boy Jedi. Uh, when he'd come out, um, he did board and training. Again, we get him for boarding afterwards. And anxious and unable to calm down. Very whiny. But now that he knows about the oils, he'll ask for them when he comes in. If we don't have the diffuser running, which we always try to do when we know he's coming in. If we don't oil him up as soon as he arrives, he will. Or if we don't oil him up first thing in the morning, right? Or if he thinks he needs them, he'll be in his crate and he'll whine. And we look at him and we're like, what is it, buddy? And he'll spin around, present his back to us, look over his shoulder like, hey, can you give me some oils right there is where I'd like them? So we go over and we oil him up. He loves it, he calms, he settles down, and he falls to sleep with them. Uh, his owners, they use them, and they're like, there is a huge difference whenever he uses the oils versus when he does not use the oils. And I'm like, yep, I know. Uh, the nice thing about the essential oils is it enables your clients to have professional results at home. Now, I expect that whenever the client's dogs are with you, they're doing better than whenever they are at home, which happens. And it happens with every single one of us. Why? Is because my clients are not professional dog trainers. My clients have other lives uh, with their friends and their family and their work, and they're not professional trainers. They don't get to spend, you know, 23 hours a day with their dogs. Um, they don't get to work them. They don't have the knowledge that professional trainers have. And our job is to equip them so they have as much knowledge as they need to work their dog or more. Um, and inspire them and everything else. But you know what essential oils can do? Essential oils will give your dog professional results at home. Well, give their dog professional results at home. So as good a dog trainer as... You guys are as good a dog trainer as I am. Using those essential oils at home will help carry over uh, for a lot of these dogs. So they're going to get those fantastic results at home without having to necessarily have the, the correct timing, um, all the training sessions that are needed. And that is one amazing thing that I love about essential oils. Nala. Um, here's another one who had allergies, and she was also uncomfortable around other dogs. So we got to use them to support building up her confidence and getting her out there around the other dogs. You know, so calming her down, building up confidence. And with the allergies. Uh, TJ. TJ's a golden doodle. Uh, seven years old. So his owner had contacted me. They had gone to multiple other trainers, and he was still severely food aggressive. And they had grandchildren who would come to visit. So I had told them that he's had seven years to practice this behavior because he was doing it as a puppy. And I can't make any guarantees. I would still always do management, you know, feed him in his crate when the grandkids are over. If the grandkids are eating, have him in his crate or outside. Uh, all that. But the essential oils supported his ability to focus and to be calm. The owners continued after he returned home with his essential oils and with training. Um, they had repaired the relationship. One of the trainers had told them to do something that was just outrageous, and it totally broke all trust between TJ and his owners. So by using our training, by using the essential oils with him, they were able to repair that relationship. And the last report from them is he's a whole new dog. Everything is fantastic. They are absolutely thrilled. Uh, he is not having any issues around food, um, no issues around the grandchildren, no issues around them. And he is a dog that they've always wished that he could be. And you can see he's so cute. Um, Bree, I actually have a video 
on Brie in a second. Brie came in, again, seven years old. So we've got a lot of dogs who are older. We get a lot of dogs who are younger. Uh, German Shepherd, a white German Shepherd. Again, nervous, anxious, and crate aggressive. Now, the owner had no idea that she was crate aggressive. And she came off her meds just before starting the board and train. The owner had actually boarded her somewhere else because we couldn't take her in until a certain date and he was going on vacation. So he boarded her somewhere else and then he picked them up from there and drove about an hour or so to get to us for her board and train. And he said in just that hour plus drive, he noticed the difference with her off of her medications. And I tell you, that first night... I'm thinking if he would have left me the medications, I would have had them on in my hand and flinging them into her mouth like Tic Tacs because holy cow, she was a lot of dog. Uh, but again, huge improvements between the training. Now she had already done a board and train with somebody else as well, which just killed me because you know if she if he would have come to me first, we wouldn't have had to do two of them on her. But uh, but total different dog afterwards. So here's Bree. Isn't she pretty? So here's Bree's video. <laughs> This is what she did the whole time. From drop off, we couldn't even talk to the owner. And then we went to get her out, and this is what she did. And you can see my husband's stylish clothes there. So we used, um, this is acceptance. And when you're dealing with an aggressive dog, I'm not going to get them out to oil them up. So I'll do it through the crate. Um, we had the diffuser going right next to her. You can see where I'm standing. There's a table right beside me. And uh, we had the diffuser going. Surrender. And surrender here too. So acceptance and surrender. A lot of times the, um, the blends... Okay, so there's single oils like lavender or peppermint, and then there's blends like acceptance and surrender. And those blends, will, the names will tell you what it is that they should do. So that's what we wanted her to do was accept and surrender. You know, surrender to the old, the negative ways, and accept the new ways. And here's another video of Brie. You can see that's her in the, in the crate, of course. And you can see right behind that, that white basket and beside that, that white egg thing, that's the diffuser. So we had her right next to the diffuser. Um, here's day three. This is Wednesday. Uh, she came in on Monday. No. No, this is always her issue. She turns around and she drops. Good. So this is the first time we fed her with a bowl in her plate. What we've been doing is I'll sit in front of her with that food in a bowl. And when she's calm, I will deliver food through the crate. I'll either drop it through the top or put it through the side for her. And it goes everywhere, but she has been really good today. So that was pretty awesome. Oh, that's Luke in the background. He's going to be getting out a dog. Good, we're waiting on Brie to get out. And there's my German Shepherd Jedi and Arrow. So we had to run other dogs. You can see we have other boarding dogs, board and train dogs in. Okay, we could not have gotten those results that quickly without using the essential oils. Uh, here's Zoe, uh, mini Aussie, another anxious, unable to calm down. She actually came to our first essential oils workshop and whining and pacing and spinning and pawing at her owner. So as we're passing around some essential oils for everyone to smell and to try if they wanted to, her owner said, can I use some on her? Yes, you most certainly can. And what happened within two minutes, the dog sighs, lies down and falls asleep in the middle of my workshop, which was great because that's what I want to see happen. And everyone got to see it. So it was a fantastic visual of a dog who was unable to calm down for 20 minutes to finally just lie down and just relax for the first time. Here's Lakai. Lakai's owners <laughs> didn't know how much the oils would help until they went home. 
And he thought I was crazy for using the oils until, like I said, he actually got to witness the difference and see the difference. Now, she looks like a pretty good girl here, right? Guess what? You're going to get to see some before video. So here the owner's saying about it. Um, she's very, you know, resistant, stubborn. I'm going to fast forward a little bit here. Um, she didn't want to go in the crate, of course. And we had her in a smaller crate so she couldn't hide in the back. And she is muzzled. And of course her owners hadn't got her in the crate beforehand. Um, she hated it. Absolutely hated the crate. So they couldn't get her in the crate beforehand. Oh, this isn't good. There we go. Um, she did keep muzzle and leash and collar on for the first day or so. The thing I want you guys to notice with this video of Lakai is just the difference in her state of mind after her board and train with us. You can see she's working with us as a team. She's following our lead. And that's what it's all about, guys, is building up that teamwork and communication with your dog and helping them so they're in a much better state of mind and they're not that frantic energy that they were before. Uh, Donnie, oh Donnie, Donnie as you can see had all sorts, well you can't see it, but he had all sorts of aggression, but you can see that he had really bad skin issues. He had Demodex, which had been untreated because the veterinarian couldn't get close enough to do an exam because of, remember when I said he had all sorts of aggression? Yeah. Um, Rich was the first one to work with him. As you notice, Rich is the first to work with, you know, Lakai, Bree, TJ, Donnie, um, all the ones who had pretty serious aggression issues because um, my energy can be a little bit too much for some of these dogs in the beginning. So I control it. I'll work with them, you know, with uh, Bree. I had mentioned that we had done the food stuff, you know, so I sat there and I worked with her that way. Donnie, I did the same thing. I'd sit by his crate and I'd Reiki with him. But to get him out and work him, I did better videoing and Rich does better working them. And it's something that you have to understand your energy and their energy and who you do best with. Um, to know who you're going to work with. And we want to avoid bites. We want to avoid putting undue stresses on the dogs. So like I said, so Rich was the first one to work with them. Um, but Donnie came out. Uh, we worked with him. He was actually with us from Thanksgiving to Christmas. So you can see the bottom uh, corner picture here. He is with my parents had come down and with Rich and Luke. And I took the picture and he's chilling out. Um, this is a dog who was super dog aggressive. We had him out in the dog yard with Arrow. You know, they wouldn't necessarily play, but they could coexist together. Um, you know, we had him out with our dogs around. Um, we used the essential oils to help with his skin and coat issues because, and for his aggression issues, um, you can see how bad it is. His skin would just start bleeding. Just for no reason, it just start bleeding. Um, but we made a lot of progress in the time that he was with us. The day after his return home, his appointment had a, or his uh, owner had an appointment at University of Florida Veterinarian. And he was a perfect gentleman. She did bring him in muzzled, um, which was smart. Um, but he went in there. He dealt with the dogs that were in there. He dealt with the, the tax. He dealt with the vet. He dealt with the front office people. Um, there's a little kiosk, a coffee area. And he was in line for that with other dogs and people. And he was a perfect gentleman the whole time. So I thought that was fantastic. Um, we had we sent all of our clients home with some oils um, that we've been using on them and that they've done well with. Um, because we see the huge improvement that they do with the oils. It's not just the training. It's not just the energy. It's not just any one thing. It's a combination of everything that we've discussed here on the holistic side, plus all the training, um, you know, letting them be dogs for some of the time. You know, there, there's a bunch that goes into it, but the essential oils play a huge role. So does the energy. Um, the doga we don't do with every dog, and the kinesio tape, like I said, we don't do with every dog. Um, but the oils and the energy we do with every single dog we work with. If you're going to use essential oil, some of the safety precautions are avoid your dog's eyes, ears, and nose. 
You want to use only quality essential oils. And if you're not going to use quality essential oils, it is better not to use essential oils at all. Uh, from our unscientific experiment I was telling you about earlier, there is a difference. And if you're wondering what the difference is, I encourage you to do an unscientific or a scientific experiment and see. Um, because there's a difference between oils that are... Uh, or, you know, produced organically, the, the plants are, who are harvested at their peak, um, that aren't diluted, aren't cut with, with uh, fillers or with chemicals, um, versus ones who are. Uh, be cautious if your dog has a pre-existing medical condition, and you always want to start with diluted essential oils when introducing them to your dog. Now, 100% pure, all the oils that we've bought including the ones for the unscientific experiment, were labeled 100% pure, but that does not mean what we think it means. Companies can claim that if a portion of the oil, if the portion of the contents is the listed oil. So say you buy a bottle of lavender. Lavender is the most adulterated oil out there, and only 10% of it might be lavender. And out of that 10% that's lavender, it might be lavender that's been um, you know, processed chemically. It might be lavender that's been used with pesticides, you know, and then cut with other things and labeled as pure lavender. And other things can be added and not listed on the bottle. How do you use essential oils? There's three different ways you can use. Um, one is diffusing into the air. The second is applying topically. And the third is ingesting orally. So to diffuse it into the air, you want to have a diffuser. You want to fill the water reservoir Add your drops of essential oil that might be as little as three to five drops and start the diffuser and you sit back and relax. This is the first thing that we have going in the dog room or in the office before we see the dogs, before we get the dogs in, is we have the diffuser going. Uh, the dogs can, if the dogs are not crated, so like when you do it at home with your dogs, your dogs can leave the area if they want to. Uh, for us, the dogs can't because we have them crated. So the dogs who need it the most, we put closer to the diffuser and this provides hours of therapy. You can also do passive diffusing. Uh, for example, one to three drops on their bedding, on a bandana, a dog collar, uh, that little teal, that's a diffuser charm, on a pillow, on furniture. This is perfect for car trips to get your dog to calm and relax because you're driving and you don't want to be calm and relaxed. You want to be awake and alert. Uh, the dogs can't escape this, so do be careful if they're wearing them. Um, you can also wear it on a pendant or wear it on yourself in the beginning, and so that's one of the things that we'll do is we'll put the oils on ourselves before we work with the dogs. So I'm going to show you how we use the diffuser. It's super easy. You lift it. There, see that line there? That is the water fill line. So you fill it up with water. You get your oil and drop it in. Now this one was slow coming out, so I shake it. You also, there's the um, the big hole in the middle, that's for aeration. There's a little hole on the side that's actually where the oil comes out at, so sometimes you can spin it and get it to come out more. Uh, but this is grounding, and I found for me sometimes grounding is very, very slow to come out. And then getting the lid back on, and then you push the button, and voila, you can see it coming out there. And then this one has one where it'll go on intermittent, so that's what we put it on. That's how easy it is to use the diffuser. And like I said, I set it up by the crates. Um, I could move it around the room if I want to, uh, but I love having the diffuser on. And yes, I do have cats, and yes, I have a bird, I have a Connor, and yes, I do diffuse with them around. Um, with the oils we use, I don't worry about it. I feel very comfortable doing that. Um, the second way is applying topically. You can use it neat, which means directly from the bottle, or with the carrier oil, um, you always want to start, though, with diluting it. If there is a reaction to it, you want to dilute it with the carrier oil, and this might be the V6, sweet almond oil, fractionated coconut oil. Do not try to dilute it with water, because water will drive the essential oils deeper into your skin, uh, whereas the carrier oils will keep them on the skin. And you can spread it out over larger areas, because the essential oil has to ping pong uh, through the carrier oil. And you can reapply it as needed. It does not build up. So how do you apply it? Topically, you drop one to four drops of essential oil onto your hand, and then you add the carrier oil. Then you pet your dog. Uh, you start at the back of your dog, um, away from their nose. So I start usually around the hips, and I'll stroke up the fur at least three times. 
Um, you can also apply it to the problem area. So we were talking about hip dysplasia. If I'm going to do some ones that will support that area, I want to use the uh, carrier oils because I can spread it out over that whole area. And remember back to the video it, with Brie, if it's an aggressive dog, you want to apply by dropping it through the crate. Don't go hands-on. Don't try to get bit over essential oils. Just drop it through the crate. So this is Rude. This is my Border Collie from the Kinesio Tape videos. And we're going to show you how to directly apply it topically. So we have, um, this is one of their animal scents. It's a tea away. Now Rue does not always like getting oils put on him because he knows it makes him calm. And he doesn't want to be calm. He wants to be a crazy border collie. So we do it anyway for him. And there I drop them in and I can fluff it up his back. He was just outside playing with the hose so he's a little bit wet. So you can rub it in that way and apply it, you know, through the droppers. Um, and that one came diluted in the bottle. I'm going to show you this. This is Arrow. Arrow loves having oils put on him. And what I'm going to use is, this is the V6 Carrier Oil and Sacred Mountain. So uh, he loves any oils, Arrow does. And if I'm oiling up any dog, he wants to get his, his part in. So you put a couple drops in. One of them always sneaks out too. So I have three drops in my hand here. And one, two pumps of the Carrier Oil. And I want to rub them together to get them on both hands and rub up my dog. So start from the butt, work towards the shoulders. Again, he loves them, so I'm gonna give get all of that onto him. And it's not gonna, because it's with the carrier oil, it's not gonna diffuse up into the air. It's gonna stay on him, so he's gonna be able to smell it for longer and get the benefits of it for longer, and it's gonna stay on his body for longer. You can also let your dog choose which oils. Remember our boy Jedi, who will show you where he wants them by spinning and presenting his back to you? Well, sometimes they'll let you know which oils they prefer to. And how you do that is you crack open the tops of essential oils and you want to place them six feet apart on the ground. Let your dog walk by and sniff and see which your dog prefers. Which one do they stop and sniff at? Which one do they keep coming back to? Which one do they hit and they want? Which one do they totally avoid? Don't use that one. Uh, you can also waft it in the room, or you can present the cap of it to your dog and have your dog come over. And a lot of times that's how we'll start, is I'll present the cap, and as the dog's sniffing the cap, if they're good with it, I'll put it on them. Uh, and the third way that you can use the essential oils with the dog is the ingest it orally. And how you do this is you can either add it to their water, We'll add it to their water bowl. If you're going to do this, I do suggest having plain water available as well. Um, you can add it to their food, to the canned food, um, if you're stuffing the Kong, or uh, into dry food to make dry food soup, or use a clear vegetable capsule. Um, they do sell clear vegetable capsules. Personally, I have not used the clear vegetable capsules yet because I find most dogs don't want to take pills anyway. So I'm not going to give them one more pill that they don't want to take anyway. And you want to make sure that the oils that you use when ingesting orally are labeled for ingestion. Because remember when I said about the 100% pure? There are some oils you cannot give to your dog, um, and there's some brands that you cannot give to your dog. So some of the ones that we have used orally are Digize, an animal sense line of Paragize, uh, the Peppermint, Lavender, Citrus Fresh, um, these are all ones, the Citrus Fresh, I was actually using the German Shepherd, my Jedi, with the, um, the hip dysplasia. She also was in chronic kidney failure, so she got Citrus Fresh in with her water every day, um, in with her food. We also had um, one of their supplements called K&B, which stands for kidney and bladder, and that helped her out um, and helped her live good until the end there. And what you want to do is start with one drop. So here is the video. Uh, what I do is I take a two liter pitcher of water and I add my one drop. This is Dajai's. One drop and another one stuck in. Uh, what you can do is let it sit there to just spread out all over while you get the food ready. But because this was a video, I had the food ready already. Ready already. There we go. And you pour it in to make the, dog, the dry food soup. Um, you can add any other supplements at this time. And then what I'll do is I'll take the rest of the water and I'll use it to fill up their water bowl. 
So that one drop is in now the water bowl along with the three bowls of water. And depending on the dog, we've done six and seven bowls of water with the one drop in the two liters of water and put the rest in the water bowl. So, you know, that one drop lasts you quite a while, which is pretty neat. But those are the three ways you can use the essential oils with your dog so you guys can get hands on, get those oils on the dogs and start seeing what type of results you're getting. Through all of this, through the energy and the Reiki, through the essential oils, the Doga, the Kinesia tape, you know, the most important thing is start getting some hands on stuff and see what type of results you're getting. Uh, we do have continuing education. If you go to our dreamk9eo.com site, so dreamk9.com is our main site, and you can get from there to any of our other sites, but we have the Dream K9 EO is our essential oils, and we have a Dream K9 SD, which is our service dog site. And what you'll find on the EO site is we do have a four-week essential oils and dog course. Uh, there is an optional exam and a certificate after that four-week course. We also have a bunch of free online classes along with your free CD and information from us. So check us out. Contact me if you're interested in learning more about a holistic training approach, a holistic lifestyle with your dog. I tell you guys, this is the best thing that we ever could have done. The results that we get using the holistic side of things beat the results that we were getting before we started incorporating them. This is something I firmly believe is a must for every trainer. I believe this is the future of dog training and I want you guys to be part of the ride. Have fun!